grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. It is my joy to warmly welcome you to this act of worship in celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord, and we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. Let us pray now the prayers of penitence. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith, as we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Pentecost reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit 
and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all, all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Today, we celebrate the birthday of the church, the day on which we recall the coming of the Holy Spirit to the first disciples. They had been promised this gift and had waited for it. And when it came amongst them, it turned an at times frightened group into a world converting force. They adventured in the power of the spirit and whatever they had to face, however many obstacles or persecutions and horrors were their lot, they did so filled with the spirit given them. We only have to read the Acts of the Apostles to see how it all started, and then to see the power of the Holy Spirit alive in the hearts and minds of those who have sought to adventure in his name across the centuries, and feel this power in our lives to know that the greatest step in a person's life, and thus the greatest steps forward to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ are done in the power of the Spirit let loose in lives attuned with his, the Lord's life. The Acts of the Apostles has been called the gospel of the Holy Spirit. We read what they did and therefore that we are to pray in the spirit, preach in the spirit, be guided by the spirit, and that the spirit equips us, making us bold and lending us words to speak. The gifts of the spirit are listed by St. Paul in his first letter to the church at Corinth. And there are varieties of gifts given but it is the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. So let us note then that the first disciples waited for the coming of the Holy Spirit. This is not always easy, but we as individuals and as a church have to wait on God and his promptings. It's his agenda and not ours. And again and again, it is proved that his timing is perfect. We can wait on him in prayer and silence, which is at the very heart of our Julian group meetings, in which we follow the example of Mother Julian's own spiritual life and teaching. We are empowered for working with the Spirit. The Spirit calls us afresh in, our, in every generation to find new ways of bringing the gospel message to others. Let us note then that the coming of the Spirit was very powerful, and so much so that it was likened to the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
There seemed to be tongues of flame and fire dancing on the heads of every one of them. Very powerful stuff was going on here, but then they would need it as the task was far from easy. Spirit given them, empowered them beyond their wildest imaginings and fill this power, they stepped out into new life. And so the message spread. As we know, all this is ours today. And we too adventure in his name. We have, of course, finally to be prepared to face change and challenge as the spirit takes us out of our comfort zone. At times, none of us likes that, myself included. The spirit challenges us as well as comforts and disturbs us as well as sustains. I have the following near the front door here at the rectory. Troubler of the authorities challenge me. Bringer of new life enable me. Teacher by example inspire me. Stiller of the storm, calm me. We are living in very sad and difficult days. We need the same Holy Spirit as we seek to live life in its fullness and help others to live that life too in these troubled times. Make Pentecost be special for us all as we give thanks for the Holy Spirit and live in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that at this time of uncertainty and distress, we may be strengthened to serve you and each other. Lord, Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will for your church. Lord, fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever we find ourselves and to share your peace with our neighbour. Lord, fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring comfort and wholeness where there is loneliness, sickness and sorrow. Lord, fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for those who care for sick and the vulnerable. 
or key workers that keep our community going during this pandemic, and for scientists searching for a cure for the coronavirus. We ask you to bless the work of their hands, that through them many will be restored to health and our world will be made safe once again. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus, that others may be drawn to you. Lord, fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We remember those who have died and ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Generous God, in your mercy, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever, amen. We conclude our worship by asking God's blessing upon us. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.